late planted soybeans call for revised management practices. The wheat program's annual field day is set for June 13th, and Michigan Agricultural Commodities' Chris Betts will have a market update. I'm Janelle Gross, and this is Farm News 5. Farm News 5 is brought to you by Ford. Less than half of the state's soybeans are planted, thanks to frequent spring rains in some parts of the state. So about a week ago, Michigan Ag Statistics Service said that about 45% of the soybeans were planted in the state of Michigan. In the past week, we've had opportunities in a lot of places throughout the state that finally dried out, got a little break from the rainfall, and got a lot of work done. So the soybeans that are going in the ground now are going in the good conditions. The ones that were planted earlier, a lot of those have emerged and have really good growth on them. So I think we have an opportunity to do really well, even though we're a little bit later planted than we'd like to be. When planting soybeans in June, growers need to implement certain management practices in order to maximize their yields. When we're planting in the month of June, we really do need soybeans. We really do need to plant in narrow rows. 15 inches or less would be the optimum. You just, uh, matter of fact, I was talking to one producer and he's actually willing to go back and double plant with his corn planter. And the reason is we don't want to have a lot of evaporative moisture losses from the soil surface. You know, you think about June, July, that sun is just straight up and just beating down in that soil. We want to cover that soil with our crop and shade it. Another reason we try to uh, plant in narrow rows is if we get some shade, we'll get the pods higher up off the ground than if you had open canopy and open ground. So narrower rows, and then the other thing is you also want to increase the planting rates. Probably after, uh, I'd say in the first half of June, you want to up them by probably 15% over what you would normally do in May. And then in the last half of June, hopefully we don't get there, but in the last half of June, you want to go as high as 20% higher. So let's say June 15th rolls around and we still have significant acreage to be planted. We may, depending on what you have, but if you've got what's considered a full season bean for your area, you probably should consider trading that in for one that's at least a half a maturity group earlier. You could even go a full maturity group earlier, but never go any earlier than that. The wheat program annual summer field day is set for June 13th. The MSU Saginaw Valley Research and Extension Farm plays host to the event, which will feature plot presentations on variety improvement, weed and disease control, and fertility, as well as a national wheat outlook. Registration can be completed online at miwheat.org. Dr. James Averill has been named Deputy Director of the Michigan Department of Agriculture and Rural Development. MDAR Director Gordon Wink says Averill's passion for the agriculture industry, coupled with his leadership experience, makes him an ideal fit for the role. He previously served as the department's Animal Industry Division Director and will remain the state veterinarian until a replacement is found. Are they an employee or an independent contractor? It is an important distinction to make when hiring. Read attorney Deanna Swisher's article in the Foster Swift Agricultural Law News to learn more about the difference. The Michigan Agritourism Association has released the 11th annual edition of its Discover Michigan Farm Fund directory. The guide is a comprehensive collection of farm markets, U-picks, and educational farms in every region of the state. The release comes in tandem with the relaunch of the MichiganFarmFund.com website, complementing the printed directory. The directory can be found at Farm Bureau Insurance Offices, Michigan Welcome Centers, and tourist offices throughout the state. Bayer's acquisition of Monsanto has been conditionally approved by the U.S. Department of Justice. According to the DOJ's conditional approval, the integration of Monsanto into Bayer can take place as soon as the divestments to BASF have been accomplished, which is expected to be completed in approximately two months. The Michigan Soybean Promotion Committee is devoted to investing soybean farmer checkoff dollars to address grower concerns. We focus our efforts on production research, market development, and outreach. Learn more at michigansoybean.org. With a look at the latest market activity, here is Michigan Ag Commodities' Chris Betts. Thanks, Janelle. Corn felt pressure this week from a better than expected 79% good to excellent national crop rating versus 65% last year. 
Funds exiting their overly long position in corn lent pressure over the shortened week. This group has plenty left to burn through should U.S. conditions remain largely favorable. Soybeans were pressured by good planting progress for the week ending May 27th. Monday afternoon's report showed beans 77% planted versus 62% on average. Wheat continues to be supported by conditions in the plains, but beneficial rains this week lent pressure. Outside of crop conditions, the big news came from Washington, D.C., as the White House announced tariffs on $50 billion worth of Chinese goods with industrial significant technology. This a turn for more collaborative indications last week. Later in the week, the White House announced tariffs on metals imported from the EU, Canada, and Mexico. The most immediate fear for ag trade would be retaliatory tariffs on U.S. commodities. China has already used soy as a bargaining chip, and officials from the EU, Canada, and Mexico have called the proposed tariffs unacceptable and promised retaliatory measures. For more market information, go to michigan.com. With Michigan Agricultural Commodities, I'm Chris Betts. For more news and video, visit michiganfarmnews.com and the Michigan Farm Bureau channel on YouTube. With Farm News 5, I'm Janelle Bros. Have a great week of farming.